Welcome back to the channel, friends. Hi. We are busy in the kitchen today. Yes. I have um, a lot of tomatoes coming in, and when I was putting tomatoes up the other day in the pantry, and then putting tomatoes in the freezer, I'm like, I think I'm kind of good on a lot of things. <laughs> so yeah. there is something that I use regularly, though, that I've never tried to make myself. Tomato paste. Yes. So if you guys aren't new to my channel, I use tomato paste and a lot of canning recipes. So I always have to buy like a case of tomato paste and um, I thought, why not try to make it myself? And I'm not doing it necessarily the right way, right? Because the right way you should use paste tomatoes only. Mm -hmm. um, so we are using all the tomatoes, just random. Um, I went through this morning, washed them, um, we cored them and um, kind of just halved them to get ready to go through our food meal. And now it takes kind of two I, to do the food meal the way we like to do it right. with the drill. And um, so Todd got that hooked up. We're now processing these. Yes, and then they're gonna end up from, from this pan of liquid tomato juice. It's gonna go into the roasting pan. We're gonna let that cook down. Just to get some of that initial water. Some of the initial mm -hmm. water off of it. And that process is probably gonna take, maybe let it run overnight maybe. Yeah, we'll see, yeah. So. Um, I'll bring you guys through the process though. And also with, I know you're gonna say, what about all the skins and stuff? Yeah. And we definitely are going to um, take advantage of the skins. So come back for the whole video. We'll show you all the ways of what we're doing with this. Getting to ultimately a true um, tomato paste and then show you how you can use your skins too. Yep, we will not waste anything. Okay. Okay, so there are a lot of recipes. Well, actually not that many because I researched this morning how to make potato, um, tomato paste. There's not many recipes out there to begin with. There are a couple good ones, so I'll recommend one specifically. Jen over at Sunshine Farm, I think is the name of her channel. She had a really good um, video out. I watched how the Italian grandmas do it over in Italy or Sicily, wherever that video was. Um, but we're gonna be doing something slightly different. You guys have seen me use my roaster for many, many, many things. Oftentimes, whether it's spaghetti sauce, salsa, pasta sauce, if you're using just your garden medley of tomatoes and not strictly paste tomatoes, it's gonna be watery to begin with. So I always lean on having tomato paste to thicken it up so I don't have to cook it down so much. All I'm doing is adding four bay leaves to this and we're gonna turn it on probably like 300, 350. I can't see my dial. Um, so yeah, right at 300 for now, kind of like that roast, a little higher than soup and stew just to get it cooking. I know a lot of you also bought roasters since seeing some of us use it for large batch canning recipes like I do often and you struggle with things scalding and burning in it. It's not exactly like a slow cooker where you can, unless you're using the slow cook setting on it, you will need to come in and stir it from time to time to keep it um, from not scorching around the edges. But also another tip is this, I can't lift it up, but this is the insert that goes into the cooker. And add yourselves a couple pints of water to the base and that just helps e distribute the heat evenly. Um, and I found that that might be what helps me is using the water in the base. Um, but this is like he said, gonna cook for maybe even 24 hours, if not more. Um, I will come in and stir it from time to time. We wanna get this reduced, I would say 50 to 70%. Um, and then we'll bring you guys along for the next step. Um, and you want to show them what we're going to do with the tomato skins? Yep. Okay. 
So tomato skins, not done. You did see that we ran those through the two Victorio times. two times. Um, once is never enough to get, like, unless, I don't know when once would be enough, unless you were working with frozen tomatoes, I guess, and the skin slipped off without any meat on mm -hmm. it. But there's still going to be a lot of meat on those skins. Maybe when three more cups or four yeah. more cups we got mm -hmm. by running it a second time. Right. So, yeah, I'm ready. So last year when we made our barbecue sauce, we used the same process. We used the same machine. We extracted all of the skins and the seeds off and we put them in our dehydrator. We posted a video about that. You dehydrate it down. It gets all nice and hard. We toss it in our blender. We blend it up into a powder and we use it as a food additive in different pasta dishes. Not not so much as like a, a tomato paste replacement in powder form, just kind of as a, a light seasoning or to add color to certain dishes. In fact, I think I've used it quite a few times already in some of our what's for dinner videos early on in the season. And I think we, Rachel's in the pantry right now looking for some more, but I think we're actually out. So this will be a good resupply for us. I just fired up the freeze dryer down in the basement. When that gets down to temperature, gets down freezing, we're gonna take these down, we'll toss them in. They should be pretty quick because most of the moisture is out of this already. Once that's done, we'll pull out of the freeze dryer, we'll throw it in our blender, we'll turn it back into a powder, and we will restock our supply for that. So I'm not in my kitchen anymore. It is the next day, and let me tell you, I don't remember what time I left you guys yesterday when I had all the tomatoes in. It was probably noonish, I'm, I'm guessing. I cooked this all day. We ended up going, leaving the house around three. I turned it down to like 225 then because we were gonna be out the rest of the day. Always leaving the top off. We got home, it had cooked down quite a bit. I would say maybe 25% or so. And then um, we just turned it on the slow cook setting when we went to bed. Again, leaving the lid off. I woke up this morning and it was way down. So I'm gonna pull up the camera because I don't have my big tripod down here to show you. Um, but that is how much it's cooked down. So let me just hold up the spoon. Yeah, a lot. And I say this is excellent texture for sauce, like the way I like sauce, whether it's chili or spaghetti sauce, where you can write on the top of it. Like if you're a soap maker, you know what that's called, like tracing. And I can write on the top of it. But it's still not thick enough for the purposes of using it like tomato paste and you know i debated back and forth like you can certainly keep cooking it down make tomato paste and can it i just have a lot of other things to do <laughs> um and i want to and as much as this is hands-free like to get it down to the next stage of getting it to tomato paste i would the process I felt confident in when I was watching other people's reviews and their um, recipes was like you put it in the oven um, and you cook it down that way, kind of stirring it, respreading it out on a baking pan. Um, and I just had green beans and potatoes to can today. I've got carrots in the sink to can. So kind of just a little bit less hands off and I chose to just do it in my freeze dryer. And when I say do it, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna put the sauce in the freeze dryer, freeze dry it, powder it, have it in a jar, and then I'll just use it like a thickener um, to whatever I need. And I think that's gonna work. So I need to get these out. We just freeze dried all the skins and seeds. 
and I just turned those off. That's how those turned out. Similarly, we'll powder these, just throw them in the blender, powder them up, and that will be Todd's yummy tomato um, seasoning he adds to all kinds of dishes. And I was surprised that we didn't have any left. So basically we have the Harvest Right freeze dryer if we didn't say that in this video. It is an expensive investment. You can totally live life without it. Um, but if you are interested, I think we have a discount code. But do you see that, I think that's showing on the camera. There's still quite a bit of water content in here. Um, not a lot, but let me hold it up. Ooh. Um, so all this will do is help get out some of that remaining water content and I'll see if I can do this cleanly without spilling everywhere. And I'm just going to load these trays, see how many I can get in at a time and freeze dry this. I'll bring you guys back at the end. What I will do is stick around till the end and um, once this is freeze dried, turned into powder, if you wanted to do it that way, or even dehydrate it, turn it into powder, um, how much water would I need to add to make like a six ounce can of paste? So I think that'll be a, a good experiment to show you guys. So let me get these trays in very, very carefully. Todd's not home and he's, he's my freeze dryer man. So this is the first time I'm ever running this thing by myself. So we'll see how well I've paid, paid attention. Well, the freeze dryer ran for a total of almost 28 hours. It took a long, long time, mostly because we didn't freeze these beforehand. No. They, were, they were completely warm, room, room temperature, room temperature. They were not when they went anymore. in. So it had to freeze them and then freeze dry them. It was done. We pulled them out. The freeze dryer is defrosting right now so we can run the next batch. Right. We brought them upstairs. Everything looks good. You hear that? Sounds kind of good. This tray sounds good, doesn't it? If you go to a different tray, like this one. They all sound the same. It, they're, you're it's not sticky. here. It's sticky. <laughs> it's sticky. They all sound crunchy, crispy, but when you touch the bits, it kind of feels like that play foam that kids yeah. play with. Like this one's not even, this one doesn't even crunch. It's just like, Yeah. it's like, bubble gum that somebody stuck under the table <laughs> yes. and accidentally touch it. Right. That's kind of what it feels like. Yeah. So we're going to have to rerun these through the freeze dryer again because we don't want to waste this. This is a this lot, is a of, lot of food and a lot mm -hmm. of work went into this. So we're going to stick them back in the freeze dryer and we'll pick this video back up when they're done. Well, we let these run for another 12 to 14 hours or so and they're all crunchy and crispy now. So they dried all the way, which is good. So now they're gonna preserve well. If you if you try to preserve something that you freeze dried that didn't get freeze dried all the way, it means there's still moisture in it, which means it's not gonna store well. So Rachel is working a little bit late today. She's in a meeting for a little while longer, so I'm gonna get these um, emptied out. We're gonna put them into the Vitamix. We're gonna turn them into a powder, and then we'll turn this video back over to Rachel to wrap things up with you guys on finishing off this tomato paste. Well, that's crazy. What is that, like 40 pounds of tomatoes turned into, I mean, it's heavy. It's not like it's super light powder, but pretty wow, crazy. 
I want to do a, an experiment for myself, but I'm gonna share it with you just so I can write it on the lid. How much does it take to make six ounces of tomato paste? So my plan is I'm gonna do it like a heaping tablespoon at a time. Um, I should have teared this first. I'm just using my little kitchen scale and I'm gonna add like a heaping tablespoon at a time and maybe I'll start with two tablespoons. So I'm gonna then just add water, mix, and see how much do I need to add to get tomato paste. All right, so that's two tablespoons, which was 0.3 ounces. I added 0.6 ounces of water to it. It's pretty darn thick. Let that sit and rehydrate for a little bit. Come back and check it. All right, well, at the rate that we're going, we're going about two tablespoons, keeping like for every ounce in measurement. So, I'm going to add some more water to this and I think I'm just going to stop here and freeze it. I'm just going to make that note on my lid and then I'll know that if my recipe calls for like I have some canning recipes that call for like four jars of tomato paste um, that would be like 24. No, four. Four times six is 24. That would be a lot. I'm going to end up using a lot of this. Wow, it makes you appreciate tomato paste, doesn't it? That takes a lot of tomatoes to make that. But I tell you what, I, I couldn't can as much as I can without it, and now I totally appreciate it differently. So, yeah, now we're looking like the real thick, thick stuff. Look at that. Tastes amazing too. So I'm just gonna throw a lid on this, put it in my freezer and I'll have it ready to use for the next recipe. But yes, that was fun. Fun for me to learn, fun for me to have on hand as just a go-to thickener without having to can the tomato paste. Cause I honestly think even though this is shocking, <laughs> I would have even been more shocked if I had tried to turn this back into this and can it and see probably like four four ounce jars or something like that. So let's keep it on the shelves as is and then I can use as much as I think I need and see fit. Pretty neat though. Definitely worth it. I think I'll do it again for sure. And it's kind of a reason to grow excess tomatoes because you can use tomatoes for just so many things when you start thinking about ingredients and condiments and all the things that your family normally purchases from the store that um, you can make it yourself too. Pretty cool. All right, there you go. Homemade tomato paste from our freeze-dried tomatoes.